Hi guys, it's Jesse and it's Ryan. And I'm here to tell you guys, Free Skate's back. And um, unfortunately though, we're going to talk about, well not unfortunately, but we are going to talk about Skate America. But unfortunately, I had so much going on so I didn't really watch too much of it. I didn't really know, so I'm not going to be in this video. But I wanted to kind of like do the introduction and show that I am still here. And we're going to do Skate Canada because that we have full coverage here in Canada. So that I'll be on and I'll be paying attention. And for us on TV, it starts tomorrow. So realistically, yeah. we'll probably have our video up by probably Monday. So Well, here's hoping. Yeah, here's hoping. But I think we will. I'll make sure. Um, I just want to say, well, have a good talk, Ryan. Oh, thank you. Show them all how it's done. You guys, don't miss me too much because I will be back Monday. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you guys, I'm super excited to get into this with you with uh, Skate America. Let's get right into the ladies. So, top five skaters in the standings. Fifth place was uh, Sinatsina from Russia. Sakamoto fourth. Young Yu third. Usa Cheva second. And Trusova first. So, first place I don't think was too much of a surprise. Uh, as Trusova has kind of dominated when she uh, skates, especially in these uh, Grand Prix events. Um, so the ladies brought it. Great skating in the free skate specifically. There were so many standing ovations. Um, I think the biggest key point issue here, uh, surprise, surprise again, uh, was the PCS scores. Um, I have a big issue with the way the judges are scoring PCS. It's so subjective. I literally don't, I don't understand how they're coming up with these scores. I just, I just don't get it anymore. Um, Miyahara scored um, lower than Trisova by 0.2 of a point in PCS in the free skate. So the judges are saying that she's basically equal, like they're they're equal to each other. I watched one program, and then I watched the other program, and I paid attention to only the skating and the transitions and the skills. Um, I omitted the jumps, and honestly, you guys, it wasn't even close. Um, if you are scoring Mihara at a 68.91, uh, then Trusova should be honestly at like, like a 63. Uh, what I found interesting when I looked at the judge's score specifically was uh, judge number six scored Trusova all in the nines. Meanwhile, judge eight had her uh, three out of five areas at 7.75 performance interpretation, composition at those uh, marks, while other judges uh, had 9.25 and 9.5. So judge number six was from Hungary. Susanna uh, Vakarni Hamolia was her name. Uh, judge number eight was from Netherlands. Uh, so that wasn't super shock there, seeing a Hungarian judge side with the Russian skater in uh, that PCS component. That's very subjective. Um, I think... Uh, the Japanese lady had so many more, uh, just so many more feels, so many more um, moments in the skate that she performed the music and she emitted that emotion. Um, I think Chisova just really lacked that. I mean, don't get me wrong, Chisova is a great jumper. She has strong jumps. I love her jumps this year. They're even better than they were last year. Uh, her quad lutch, lutch, her quad lutch, just pure power jumper period but there's not a ton of substance in that program um especially with the overall performance quality so how are you getting literally top 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 marks in pcs you're getting she was getting 9.5 like how i don't understand how you're getting a 9.5 that is so close to a 10 which means it's perfect but i'm sorry to silva in program components is nowhere even remotely close to perfect. So as you have a judge, how are you giving her very near a perfect score? Like, I just don't understand it. Um, the ISU is going to have to figure out something with these scores and the PCS and the bias and the subjectivity with it. I don't know how they're going to do it. Um, and I still think the factor should be more than 1.2. I think the factor should be between 1.5 and 1.8 for PCS, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but I don't see that changing anytime soon, especially with Olympic season. Uh, they're not going to change anything. This year, clearly, um, maybe next year going forward, they might tweak some rules with that, uh, seeing as the Olympic years this year. So next uh, grad season, they might tweak it. But who knows? 
Um, so, anyways, to get off that topic, because I'm not going to ramble on that forever, um, I want to uh, just mention Amber Glenn. Um, you know, uh, not only does she have fantastic skating, she's so charismatic on the ice. She knows how to pull you in for that entire skate with an emotion. She puts all of her emotion right onto the ice. I believe she performed her program better, as in musicality and stuff, better than Trusova. And she's only getting a 65 PCS. So that's a little bit lower than what she is, uh, than what Trusova's getting. Um, interpretation and musicality, I think, was light years beyond Trusova. Um, uh, the skating skills, I think, are probably similar. I think maybe the only lacking part is um, Shusova probably has a little bit more transitions and um, harder skating in between there, so I can see her getting a higher score on that. But the rest of it, I don't see how she's a three, four point difference. Like, I just I just don't see it. Um, also, another, you know what, I just wanted to congratulate um, Amber Glenn on um, publicly... Um, coming out and being an ally to LGBTQ um, persons and stuff like that. I think that's very important, uh, especially when now you are on TV and stuff like that. Um, to have those skaters and have those fans know that there's athletes and there's people and something you enjoy watching that are watching your back. And I think that's a huge accomplishment and I, uh, I want to thank her and I want to congratulate her and um, just, I hope that she keeps on moving forward and um, just being, I hope she can be herself all the time. Um, that makes me really happy and I think that makes millions of other people very happy. So Amber, if you are somehow watching this, thank you. Like honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, anyways, moving on from something a little bit more non-emotional here. Um, Daria, lovely young skater with great flow on the ice. She will absolutely be someone to look forward to in the future. Um, free skate, she had a lot of, um, or some uh, quarter rotation calls, but otherwise uh, really stunning. She's only 17 years old. Um, you young. What can you say about her free skate? The girl was second in, in the free skate. The, she had Unikim vibes from like the beginning in the short program and then the free skate. That girl was just out of this world. I was, I literally got chills from her skate when I watched it again, especially the second time. And I really paid attention to her and zoned in. I got chills all over my body. I thought she was just phenomenal. I was so excited for her. The standing ovation from the American crowd is just awesome. Um, so congratulations to you, uh, you young for uh, getting onto that, that uh, podium. Um, so that's, I'm just going to kind of leave it there for, for women, um, men, um, an American man yet, uh, one skate America yet again, but I guess this year it's not the one that you would have had your money on. Vincent Zhao is the skate American champion and he won with Nathan Chen in the field. 295 points overall, instantly putting him on. To the conversation for a world and Olympic podium spot. Um, Nathan, probably his worst event since becoming a senior competitor, finished third, second in the free skate. It's so weird how a podium finish at second in the free skate is still his worst, <laughs> which is still really good so <laughs> i'm not worried about nathan i'm sure he'll come back he's at skate canada he'll probably slay skate canada um i'm really not worried about him um so vincent zhao the, vince i can't even talk vincent zhao five quads in the free skate including a really nice quad lutz um he's gonna have to be careful though three of those quads were quarter rotation calls so he's going to have to be really careful going forward because um, when you're competing for an Olympic uh, spot, an Olympic medal, uh, world podium, etc., the judges are going to be really, really, really picky and that could really play a downfall, especially now when he's putting in five quads, but so are maybe two, three others. If somebody falters or if someone's perfect, those scores are going to make a big, big difference. Um, so we have also uh, Nathan Chen, 
Uh, he popped two of his free skate quads into doubles. Um, I'll say that his his PCS marks this year, finally, I realized the 89 was far more appropriate for his style of skating than he would have got in a perfect program. Um, Jason Brown, use your hand, you all skate. Uh, they outskate anyone on this entire planet who are getting mid-90s, over mid-90s uh, for PCS. And for Nathan to be getting very close to that is a little bit absurd. So the 89 that he had for uh, his PCS this time around, I think was far more um, appropriate, to be quite honest with you. Um... Noteworthy thing to mention is that since Nathan uh, won bronze at Skate America, you guys, you have to remember the Grand Prix final is at the end of the year um, in December. And you typically have to medal at both events, uh, depending on what happens or, or whatnot, because he only won bronze. He may not even make the Grand Prix final. He has got to win Skate Canada. Has to win Skate Canada to make the Grand Prix final. And if he somehow doesn't win, if he falters again, who knows what's going to happen uh, come Olympics and stuff like that. Um, him having a rough season, potentially, if this kind of falls downhill, it's going to be a huge, huge upside turn of events. Um, we're so used to Nathan being so dominant, uh, dominant that... When this happens now, a little bit of questions start to arise and we think, well, the what ifs. So this is a what if, if Nathan doesn't make the Grand Prix final, how is that going to play in his mind? So we'll see. Nathan has really not been in this position before. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how he skates at Skate Canada. I think he'll be okay. He is now a seasoned international competitor. I think he's going to bounce back and probably do really well. But... Nonetheless, it's going to be really interesting to see. Pairs. Shock of the event. You guys, a Japanese pair team won the silver medal. They were sandwiched between two Russian teams on the podium. Mira and Kihara won the silver medal with 208 points. They have an infectious personality on the ice. Their smile can reach the top of the arena. They have fantastic flow on the ice. And this is, without a doubt, the Japanese best pairs team, I think, in the history of Japanese skating. Uh, this is only the second Japanese pair team to win a medal at a Grand Prix event, and the first one since Takashi and Tran in 2011. So it's been 10 years since any Japanese team has won a medal at a Grand Prix event. Um, I did that research, and I didn't even honestly know that a Japanese team had won a medal at a Grand Prix event, but... Uh, apparently I was wrong. <laughs> um, no Candyman this year with uh, their crazy music choices with the Russians. Who knows what they're going to be skating to. Uh, so Trasova and Morozov. Uh, I'm glad that they got the experimental music phase out of them because they looked great. They skate comfortable now. By no means were they perfect in the competition, but it's a great start. It's a good confidence boost for them to come away with a gold medal. Um, none of the pairs teams really skated clean anyways. Um, so... I mean, it, it is what it is when you have a field of, of pairs that don't skate clean, but for uh, for them to win the gold medal, I think that's really, really big for them, especially with who they were competing against, because Bokova and Kozlovsky, who they've uh, lost to a few times already, uh, were there, and they by no means skated well um, uh, either. But we also have to uh, remind ourselves of Bokova and Kozlovsky, um, they're only 19 and 20 years old, and they are the reigning world bronze medalists, so I'm sure we have definitely just seen a early season blip from them, and I really expect them to be stunning by Russian nationals. I think they have a massive chance at winning the Russian championship again. Um, yeah, so I mean, I don't really have much more about pairs. Um, I guess we'll get into Ice Dance. Um, the American teams, you guys. Oh my god. Havel Donahue and Chalk and Bates going at it in this head to head was awesome. They were so good. Their, both their short dances were out of this world. So entertaining. Both their free skates were so entertaining and so different. Who plays an alien? Who looks good as an alien? 
Who could sell that as an alien? Literally only Madison Chalk can do that. She was brilliant in playing that. I think she did such a good job. Um, just captivating. Um, the chances that they took with their music choices um, and themes in both programs, I think, are going to pay big dividends this year. Um, Billie Eilish, the other program, like, that's not typical figure skating music. So for somebody to actually choose that and actually pull it off and intrigue the crowd, not only are you intriguing the crowd, but you're you're skating to something that's not traditionally figure skating, you're going to bring in new fans. People are going to hear that and see that. They're going to be like, oh, well, maybe I want to watch this. So I really commend them for taking those chances. And I think I think a lot more people are going to like it than not like it. Um, I've heard a few comments about um, sticking to the classical and uh, don't branch out in the music and uh, Billy Ellis doesn't belong in figure skating world. But I say, you know what? Good for you. I was thoroughly entertained and I was so impressed that they pulled it off. I was literally like dancing and clapping in my living room watching them. I was so impressed with them. Um, their car, their choreography was second to none. You can't help but watch them. Um, while I think the overall skating aspect of the dance event goes, uh, I think to Hubble and Donahue by a little bit of a smidge, uh, the components to me go to Chalk and Bates, uh, for the program. Um, Really, I think when you have a team this close um, in scores like that, um, it's it's super vital that in your levels and your step sequences and your key points in the short dance, etc., uh, you get everything. You have to get your three or four key points for sure. You have to get level fours, and that's what was missing from Chalk and Bates. They did falter a few times, um, especially in the short dance. Their key points, um, I realized that uh, Hubble and Donahue got three out of four, while Chalk and Bates only got two out of four in that. And the base value alone was a 1.1 difference, which is over the difference of the entire program uh, of the short dance between the two of them, like the two of their, their their scores. The free dance was just as close. Their planned content for the free dance, you guys, their technical content is exactly the same base value. Uh, Chalk and Bates actually beat um, um, Hubble and Don Yu in on the TES. In the free dance, 68.93 to 68.97. Um... And yeah, so it came down to two levels and, and stuff like that. Um, the PCS scores for Hubble and Don Hugh a little bit more, but they, they had um, they had that classical, really nice free dance where typically is pleasing to the judges. Madison Chalk and Evan Bates were quite a bit different, I guess, but still super super entertaining and the scores were that close so there is a razor thin margin in between them with scoring this year um i think that's the closest they've probably ever been together um going head to head in the actual international scores if one dance team messes up on twizzles or the whole key points thing uh say somebody gets two and somebody gets four again or someone is downgraded to a level two on a lift or a spin and the other team gets a level four, that could literally mean the difference between a gold medal and not a gold medal for that other team. So it's going to be super entertaining. I cannot wait to see them all compete together with all of this the the best dance teams. Um, you're going to have Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier. You're going to have the French dance team, uh, the Russian dance team. All of them, I think... The top six dice dance teams in the world in the Olympics, I think, could be separated by, like, three points. Like, overall. I think it's be so, so close. So I'm super excited for that. Um, let's talk about um, the Canadian team, Fornery, Baudry, and Sorensen. They finished third. Won the bronze medal. They were 18 points back behind the Americans. So it, it was a very large difference between first, second, and then third. Uh, there was 18 points. Uh, but I really, really like how they skate. Um, they do have a wonderful style. They carry themselves really nice on the ice. They're very entertaining. They're very pleasing to watch. 
and I think uh, Canada's got a really solid third dance team there. Um, I think they can work on polishing fine details, specifically GOEs on the elements and getting their, their levels. Um, they had quite a few level calls that put their base value down, a few uh, two and three level calls. Uh, you want to get all level fours because that level four, when you're doing something, is going to get you the highest base value of that, of that element. So if you get a level four on a lift, your base value means what the lift is worth plus or minus your GOE. So if you're already starting at, let's say 5.5 points for a level four, plus your GOE, let's say 2.5, you're at eight points for the whole lift. If you uh, go down to a level two, let's say your base value is now three and a half points. So you still did good, you're still two points back, even though you did it well because your base value was lower because you maybe didn't have the right position or not enough speed or carriage or timing or whatever the, the, the issue may be. Um, so uh, with the score sheets looking over that, I think that was the Canadians' biggest downfall. They had quite a few of those. If they would have got all of their level fours and their key points and their uh, GOEs, um, they would have been very, very close between both dances uh, to the Americans. They probably would have been within four points, maybe. So... It's something that they need to work on. Also, too, you know what? I also want to, you know, honorable mention to the Spanish dance team, Smart and Diaz. Their Zorro was incredible. Such a good reaction from the crowd. I think it's probably their best reaction they've, they've ever got uh, for an ice dance. And the way they commanded that and right to the end and like the footwork with their step sequence and then at the end with the music build and they were tap dancing their feet all over and the way he killed her at the end with the Z and the oh my god it was so good I was so impressed with the mastery in the interpretation of the music um, and they actually finished third in the free dance uh, over the Canadians but it wasn't quite enough to take them off the, the podium so good for you Smart and Diaz for, for bringing that, uh, that out that's going to be a really good vehicle for the Olympics uh, who who's not going to get into that. So anyways, that is what I have to say about Skate America. Um, I rambled it off pretty fast. Uh, more, uh, not as, as heavy hitting as I normally do. You know, we had a super busy week. Um, it's 11.38 p.m. right now. Uh, Skate Canada starts tomorrow, and I got to be on the ice myself to practice skating at 8 a.m., so... I'm so tired, you guys. Anyways, I hope you've all been doing really well. I'm so glad you tuned in to watch me and Jesse again. And I can't wait to have a full season with you with uh, crowds in the stands. I can't, I love the crowd reactions. Um, I can't wait to see the Olympics, the Grand Prix final, all the Grand Prix events. I think, I think we're just in for a really good treat this year. Um, so Skate Canada is the next event. Uh, Nathan Chen is at that event again. Um, if you have access to CBC or you are Canadian, you are going to see the technical uh, panelists on the CBC broadcast are going to be Tessa Virtue. She is coming on air with Patrick Chan and I believe Megan DeHamel as well is going to be on. So they're bringing three Canadian skating icons on and I cannot wait to see them. Um, and I'm also recording the NBC version too because I really like to hear their commentary. I try to record both when I can if they're on our TV because then I can like compare the two because sometimes they're very different and I find it very interesting. So anyways, you guys, thank you for joining and I cannot wait to see you until next time at Skate Canada. Okay, bye.